Next, we have Lisa, and she'll be discussing Pacific art making and the way in which this converges with Asian and Māori art making practices in contemporary Auckland. <coughs> Malo lava. Thank you, Helene. Now, uh, the struggle is so real for all of us in terms of representation and diversity on screen. I really wish that um, we could deliver this talk to some TV network funders and film funders as well. <laughs> Kia ora, Creative New Zealand. Um, do we need a, um, a sort of a mid-panel stand up and shake around? Should we all stand up for a sec, have a bit of a shake around before my gavel fest? Shake it out, shake it out, turn to the left, turn to the left, do a bit of a, a quick rub down to the person on the, go on, get to know your neighbour. Turn to the right, turn to the right, quick shake out, quick shake out. All right, giant stretch. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly talk about the, all the delicious flavours of Pacifica that make up our kiwi chocolate box today. Um, first, I want to go to our girl Aradna, who to me is emblematic of diversity, not just in Aotearoa, but to the world. Um, so let's play welcome, some stuff. Welcome to the jungle where things will never be the same. You can try to hang on the outside But in time you will we'll run dry I Queen. Growing up in Samoa, I've always been called Afakasi, that old colonial term half-caste, which means really half-white, meaning almost white, but not quite. I always wondered, but why am I not double? I'm two things, twice-baked, two-sided, dual-faced, surely double, not half. Why is our diversity always still quantified using the white mainstream measuring cup? The naming of our diversity becomes important because naming the space we occupy, the way we've been positioned in narratives in Aotearoa, and the ways we make up our own representation shapes our collective identity. As Pacificans, we are not one homogenous group, much like Helene's talked about with the Asian groups. We are many shades of brown, many geographies of brown. Our ancestral history and our colonial legacies have meant we reach across Asia Pacifica and the Māori Pacifica in many of our intersects. Our Pacifica is a wide tapestry of flavours, and the third generation are demanding more visibility of our particular Kiwi brownness than ever before. Recently, Beyonce sent the world a spin when she became black with her pseudo-political black imagery and lemonade in formation. In the same way, Samoan supernova Paris Goebel uncompromisingly throws out her poly swag on a global platform. These images from the most famous of our dusky divas send hugely influential messages to the masses about staking a claim for your identity on the most powerful platform of all, the digital world. With the explosion of social media, diversity for people of colour is now being thrown right up in your face. Hashtag black, black lives matter, hashtag brown lives exist. We can't go beyond popular culture for audience reach and influence. The digital world is the new reality and um, I don't know if there are any Pokemons to be captured in the room today here, but the twists and turns of the digital reality with augmented reality is quite simply where most eyeballs are currently at right now. Uh, let's not forget for, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So bad. Um, for us, New Zealand came to us first as Pacificans, as territories of the Crown, um, and oh my gosh, I have so completely lost my page. All right, diversity, the third generation, make up the biggest numbers in Aotearoa. Maui, currently this guy is a big poly representation so many people are up in arms about. So excited about being rep by Disney, the biggest mogul of them all, so disappointed. We get an oversized oaf playing for comic potential, as Carlo Miller described, our poly Shrek. <laughs> Disappointing, because clearly it is our story, but it is not for us. Whenever I look at a narrative about the Pacific, it's important to ask who is telling the story, who is it being told to? For a long time, we've been the exotic selling point in the arts of Aotearoa. In CNZ's 2011 survey, Pacific art forms were one of the most popularly attended, but by a largely non-Pacific audience. We are the sizzle that sells the sausage with groups like Black Grace and artists like Yuki Kihara spicing up the flavor of our Kiwi arts landscape, putting our poly fabulousness on the map. 
There aren't that many Pacificans who would have seen some of these works, however, and this is our challenge to change because diversity in the arts is as mu much about audience diversity as it is about making the arts. We have been manuhiri here for a long time, and now our cultures are firmly entrenched. We are woven into Aotearoa's social cultural fabric through our colonial legacy and our geographical and political histories. Let's not forget Aotearoa came to us first as territories of the Crown, and to encourage our communities to migrate for cheap labour. In many ways, we continue to be owed our due in a sense as the colourful jewels in the Crown of the realm in arts, sports and entertainment. Although our funding allocation for the arts is small, our reach is wide. And now importantly, we are developing pathways for our Pacific audiences to speak to our own communities. A few years ago, I asked the brilliant Silinga Sitonga what his family thought of his subversive and politicized Pacific images. And he said he didn't know because he didn't want to take them away from the rugby. <laughs> Um, but now, there are now, um, as Tani Mahuta said, not just new audience pathways, but new types of work being commissioned and funded around these pathways. New Pacific eyeballs means a new language in our work, new signifiers, new pre-established codes of meaning that don't have to be spelt out for a mainstream audience. So many of our parents, aunties, uncles and cousins have checked out a performance piece, a mural, a digital work, thanks to places like Fresh Gallery, Te Oro, Mangere Art Centre. Our artworks and, and art forms are being mobilised more than ever before through these avenues and also through online digital portals like the Coconut TV, yay, where our heritage art forms and our rigorous, rigorous conversation and debate around our art can be housed. So for, for the legions of the new Kiwi Island generations, these places become our virtual village, our kava circle, and we've managed to transport the village voice to these mediums, and it's where our communities are converging more and more. Um, and also I'm thinking about things like the extraordinary comedy of the Laughing Samoans, I see Ete down there, um, and those, the convergence of those audiences who, who really own that material and they're expanding more and more. I think the magic of social media and digital connectivity is it's really disrupted previous narratives that have frozen traditionally Pacifica in time with our endlessly noble and dusky people. And now our reality, as I said, is all up in your grill. These venues and digital platforms provide a new poly realness and authenticity of voice that Helena spoke of that's moved us from previous ideas of glass case culture in new and often confrontational ways. New pathways change the tone and the practice of art making so much because we are speaking to ourselves. Here we are our own mainstream. Everything else becomes the periphery. We are the centre of our increasingly diverse narratives. But as a byproduct of this, our stories become much more interesting to the wider world and all the many uniquely polylicious gifts that we have to share. And the, the visibility of our diversity is pivotal to building our national identity and our pride. As Belinda talked about, we are at the forefront of that and it's a constant celebration.